Hi everyone, good evening, good evening, good evening. I hope you've had a great day today. I'm sure it's holiday in most part of the world today. And I'm, I hope you've had a great day. Uh, in a few minutes, I'm going to be having a conversation with my friend, uh, PK Olakunle Shorino. It's a men's conversation uh, this evening and I'm looking forward to a very ex exciting and interesting conversation yeah so you think you are a man that's what we are discussing I love to talk to men because men have the opportunity to lead uh, and um, I'm a leadership coach, so let's talk to the leaders. Uh, let's talk to people who have responsibility to shape the future of a family, the responsibility to shape the future of their, of, of their children and all that. And that's what we're doing on this uh, 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 holiday, uh, or, or, or a public holiday in Lagos, Nigeria, where I live. So as you join, I want you to let me know where you're joining me from. Yeah. Radi Han, thank you for joining. I want to know where you're joining me from, everyone. So let me know where you're joining me from as you join. Chichi, uh, Chichi Light, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Uh, K Touch Pro, thank you for joining. Let me know where you're joining me from, everyone. Let me know where you're joining me from. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Joke fashion and no luapo. Okay, in Canada from Abuja, it's good to see you. Uh, Innocent from Lagos, mainland. Uh, yes, you're right in my city. Strategy coach joining from Ibadan. It's good to see you. Uh, AGK uh, of Victor. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for joining in. Wisdom joining from Abuja. Thank you for joining in. All right, uh, the conversation will start in a couple of minutes. Um, uh, uh, PD of Life from the UK, Pido, thank you for joining me. Um, Lali Kong, thank you for joining me. Tokwe, yeah, that's my friend, Tokwe Obaki, thank you for joining me. Uh, as you join, get ready for an interesting conversation. Uh, this evening or whatever time it is where you are if you're joining me from anywhere in the Americas I know you may still be in the afternoon time. We're already evening here and it's good to see everyone joining Joining thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining in. All right, Lady Laws uh, Yes, yes, yes all the way from Jaws, Lawa. Thank you for joining in uh, Thank you for joining in. We're having a very interesting discussion this evening Kunle, thank you for joining from Ibadan, right here in Nigeria. Very good conversation. So you think you are a man. And I love to talk to men. I love to talk to leaders. I love to talk to men. Yeah, Emmanuel, thank you for joining in from my city here in Lagos. Yeah, 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 yeah. So just, just tell somebody to tell somebody to tell somebody that I'm live and I will be getting my friend PK Olakunle uh to join me very soon as we discuss so you think you are a man and PK if you are online right now send me uh, a request to join the conversation uh, so that we can uh, take it up from here all right um, for all the men on, on, on the chat I mean on, 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 on live with me I want you to to just uh, just say something uh, say something about manhood, something that you love about yourself, something that you love about being a man. Uh, should the ladies leave? Please don't leave, ladies don't leave, uh, because this is a conversation that is beyond men. Uh, you're going to learn a lot from just us talking about men and uh, what the, what makes a man and how a man should think and stuff like that. Any lady that wants to marry a great man should remain on the conversation because you're going to learn a lot about uh, what you're supposed to know about men and 
yeah, Yinka says responsibility. Uh, all right, um, Ohusky from uh, New Jersey, thank you for joining in. Uh, yes, 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 love from Lagos, Nigeria to you as well. Yeah, uh, Mr. O on normal, thank you for joining. Uh, all right, all right, the conversation will start in a couple of minutes, like I said, and we're going to also give an opportunity uh, for some of us to ask questions. But I just want all the men that have already joined to just say one word about men. Somebody said responsibility. I hope somebody, okay, somebody says authority and leadership. Uh, lovely Isaacs, that's what you say, authority and leadership, okay? Uh, um, what else do we have to say about men? All the ladies who are on, um, I'm going to give you an opportunity to say something or to type in something very soon, so uh, don't go away. Uh, yes, yes, Jimmy, uh, uh, and uh, uh, someone just joined us from, from, from the U.S., or from New York. Thank you for joining in. All right. Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> somebody is already attacking uh, uh, somebody here uh, at Lovely Isaac to control your wife, right? When you say authority, well, I'm sure it doesn't mean it like that, but you can defend yourself. Somebody said protector. Uh, Sam Bamiro said head. Uh, leadership. I love that. Yes, yes, yes. Headship, leadership. And leadership comes with responsibility. Uh, Emmanuel said priest. I love that. The man should be the priest of his home. All right, all right. Get, keep it coming, keep it coming. Uh, P, uh, yeah, PD uh, said... Uh, uh servant leadership i love that servant leadership uh servant leadership josh uh, uh josh feck underscore empire said responsibility all right i love all the comments that i'm getting here uh somebody said wisdom when you think of men somebody said protector all right keep 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 those those comments coming uh jala's homes Jalas on the homes, protector, provider, leadership. Um, what else did, did, did you put there? Act of service. Okay, this is what a woman expects from a man to be a protector, to be a provider, to be somebody who can give some acts of service. Uh, clarity provider is what diction, diction doctor. Diction doctor, I hope you're going to help me with my diction someday. <laughs> uh, diction doctor said clarity provider. Uh, uh, to be to be a tea, uh, to be a tea said uh, discipline. Okay, man should be disciplined or should be the one who brings discipline on the table. Vine planter says visionary. A uh, man should be visionary. I love that a man should be visionary. All right, for joining me on this public holiday, I hope it's a public holiday in your city or in your nation. We've had a restful day today, and um, I'm having a conversation tonight. The borders on. Uh, so you think you're a man. What is all this pressure on our men? Why are we putting men under so much pressure? Is it really worth it? And um, uh, how should men be processing all this? So we're going to do a situational appraiser of the issues surrounding the, pers uh, the perception and um, actuality of a man's place in a marriage, in family, in workplace. Uh, in the workplace and in our society at large, uh, what 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 is the right perception of a man and what is the wrong perception of a man? What is the right perception of a man? What is the wrong perception of a man? It's important that we have this kind of conversation. Uh, this post-COVID era, there's a lot of pressure on our men to perform, to put their weight. A lot of marriages are failing, divorces on the rise. And um, a man is a leader, and a leader any day uh, should take charge uh, and not blame anybody. You know, if I can just get into the scriptures a little bit, uh, the, the, the first man, Adam, uh, got it wrong with God because uh, he relinquished leadership. It's not bad to have collaborative leadership uh, with members of your team. And the, the woman has um, a measure, a huge measure of equality with man. In marriage, man is the leader. Leadership speaks of responsibility, uh, but the equality between a man and a woman should also be emphasized. Um, you can uh, you can be best among equals, or you can be the one to take responsibility based on the fact that you are a man. It doesn't really make us 
greater than women. It's a privileged position that we have to be able to lead our women. And um, this privileged position often will come with a lot of responsibilities. With authority comes responsibility. Everybody wants to take charge of their home, but the problem is that we don't want to take the responsibility that is required. We don't want, we want to take charge without taking responsibility. And those are some of the things that I, I want to be able to discuss uh, tonight. Benson Emmanuel, thank you for joining me. Uh, Emmanuel also said, man is a teacher. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, we, we, we have a place, every leader has a place to raise the next generation of leaders. So, uh, responsibility to raise leaders and that means that we have to be people who can teach and pass on. Men have to be people who can teach and pass on values and pass on, you know, all kinds of things. Uh, uh, somebody here is saying, think, uh, 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 why would you think of authority as only about control? Uh, why not first see authority as a uh, show of service? All right, that's in response to somebody who accused someone about when he said a man is remembered for authority. Yeah, I, I agree with you perfectly that authority should not be seen only as control. Uh, it should also be seen as a, a show of service because uh, with authority comes responsibility and whether you are a man or a woman if you gain some sense of authority at work or at home it comes with responsibility uh, you, you you when you are given authority uh, you are expected to be able to use it well to deliver on certain project on certain assignment and that's what uh, um, uh, we look forward to when we when we see a, a man we want to be, see somebody who is in charge i'm sure ladies on the platform tonight will agree with me uh, that you love it when you have a man who is a leader who is driven uh but who at the same time uh is um, uh, you know uh, uh, has empathy uh and at the same time has compassion uh, but yet takes charge and deliver on the assignment as you know uh, as at when do you and meets up with the responsibility at home. Diction doctor says real men, real men and responsible men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you. Uh, real men are rare and the responsible men are becoming uh, rare these days as well. All right. All right. I want to welcome all the ladies joining us uh, this evening. Uh, so you think you are a man is the subject of discussion. And um, uh, I'm waiting for my friend. Uh, popularly known as PK, uh, I hope is able to join us very, very shortly. Uh, please just, just tag somebody, invite your friends to join in. Um, this is just going to be uh, for maybe about the next uh, 15 minutes or so. We're going to, you know, drill down into uh, certain, certain uh, deep discussions about this topic. So, um, somebody uh, 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 let, let's let's move gradually tonight mm -hmm. why is there uh, such huge pressure for men to live up to externally prescribed stereotypes that's a big question uh, the huge pressure on men today to live up to externally prescribed uh, stereotypes uh, uh, let's make it a good conversation on the platform this evening if you know one externally preserved stereotype that is putting men under pressure, I want you to help me write it. Write it in the comment. Is there one externally, externally pres prescribed uh, stereotype that is putting uh, you as a man under pressure? Uh, I want I want to we'll discuss the responsibilities of a man. What do you think when you think about a man? But now let's let's talk about these externally uh, you know prescribed stereotypes that are putting men under pressure. Uh, for me, I say that one is a man should be a provider. Uh, anywhere you hear provider, mm -hmm. there's a measure of pressure that comes with it. You know, when you hear provider, there's a measure of pressure that comes with it. Um, for me, I mean, I was talking to uh, a startup entrepreneur uh, yesterday after after service. And uh, this guy was telling me, oh, PG, I just started this business. Business is going well. Currently now we have about 12 employees. And uh, the only issue I have right now is that when I left paid employment, I realized that I have to be the one to think of how to pay my staff. And uh, the wage burden 
right now maybe about six million naira every month he has to think about how to get the six million naira to pay so when you think about a man from that point of view there there are responsibilities at home there are bills to be paid on a monthly basis and a man has to think of how to get that bill paid on a monthly basis you know that's huge responsibility you know responsibility uh for a man to always think about and consider uh, so when you see uh, the, the uh, you know, the, the stereotype of a man being a provider, it then brings a lot of uh, pressure on the man. Uh, but one thing that we all should come to terms with is that pressure or no pressure, uh, the responsibility to provide is actually uh, vested on, on men, but not only for men, if I can put it that way. Uh, it's uh, the responsibility is on the entire family, but men have to take full responsibility to provide. Uh, meanwhile, uh, PK, if you're online, can you resend um, your request? Uh, I can see that you joined and I tried to invite you, but somehow I don't know what happened there. I couldn't get you in. Uh, yeah so if you can send the request again uh pk i will uh, i will send you uh i will get you in okay i'm doing that again so i'm accepting you to come in yeah okay uh pk i hope you you got my request for you to click on okay great 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 all right pk i can see you PJ, welcome. I'm welcome here. Welcome on the platform. Please. <laughs> <laughs> welcome me. on the platform. <laughs> I understand. I know you've had a very busy day uh, at the platform, uh, the major event here in Lagos today. Yes. And um, I, I mean, you've been on this trip in, I mean, in Nigeria for a couple of days now. I know yes. in every day yes. as well. Yes. So I can understand. I, I was, I was afraid. I thought maybe you took a nap. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> I just dropped the mic at Nest Voices. So when I left platform, I had to go to Nest Voices. And oh wow! Yes. Wow. So I was rushing. Wow. So I just, I just got off the mic yes. and I, I was rushing wow. down. So I had to find wow. a room inside Radisson to, to just settle wow. down. And, Oh, sorry about that. That's a lot of no, pressure. No, it's a honor, PG. Pure we, we, privilege. We could, have, we could have just given a little more time and move, move the conversation to 8 p.m. But it's okay. We're, we're, it is no, what it is. And, and we're here. <laughs> we're here. <laughs> so, everyone, please, please give a shout out to PK, uh, my friend and brother, Ola uh, Kumle the, the, the The Enigma himself is Thank here you, tonight. Um, he's a man that I... I uh, respect because of uh, the abundance of grace and wisdom that God has given him, which has been able to manifest uh, in the marketplace as a man uh, who is a businessman, uh, who is also an ordained minister, a married man, a father, uh, a man who has broken ground in different ways. Uh, is currently now, currently now lives in, in, in the U.S., in, in Texas, and uh, but still comes in to work in Lagos from time to time. Uh, and I get the opportunity for us to do a lot of stuff together. Uh, so, PK, you're welcome to the platform. Thank you, sir. Uh, I've been having conversations with people on the platform who have asked about uh, what, what word reminds them of who a man is and mm. how things like leadership, responsibility, authority, discipline, vision, and all that. Um, I also ask about some of the stereotypes that are putting men under pressure today. And we're looking at one, which is that a man is seen as a provider. And I said the word provider in itself uh, connotes pressure. <laughs> because it puts, <laughs> yes, you in the class, it puts you in the class of God. Because the ultimate provider is God himself. Yes. Yeah. So it means that you share in God's responsibility. <laughs> when, when the responsibility is vested on you, to provide for other human beings. And I, I think people underestimate the kind of pressure that comes with that. I believe that it's only God 
that can take up that responsibility of being a provider without coming yes, under the pregnancy. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, because he, he is the nourisher of the universe, he can, right. he can do anything. But as All human right. beings, uh, we're very limited and, and finite in our capacity uh, mm. to produce. Yeah. Mm. So when we have to provide, there is immense pressure that comes with it uh, <laughs> because <laughs> we are more programmed to receive than to give. Correct. All right. Everybody wants to, you know, there's this concept of, um, um, uh, what do you call it? Is it, I've forgotten what they, what they call the ladies that don't walk and just sit at home, baby girl or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Baby girl syndrome. Where you're just at home and uh, you're not walking, the man does all the heavy lifting and just buys you all the expensive stuff and you just travel the world and, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and all that. Uh, and uh, I, I know our world is changing very rapidly. Uh, sure. So uh, maybe we should, we should kick it off from there. Uh, we'll have maybe about the next 40 minutes or so to just crack yes. this conversation and we're going to give opportunity. I hope we're going to be able to read the comments and give opportunity uh, to people to ask us a few questions. Uh, the comments are coming very fast. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'll be able to catch up with the comments. But PK, welcome on 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 my platform. I just wanted to speak to, uh, yeah, uh, you know, people are still commenting about my baby girl thing that I talked about, uh, baby girl lifestyle. You know, uh, what yeah. do you think? What kind of pressure have you felt in time past about being a provider as a man? Yes, yes. First of all, PG, I want to celebrate you every time. You know, I have very few people who understand the grace of God upon my life and who go out of their way to create room for it. Um, I celebrate your friendship, the strength of the grace that you understand. Uh, it is a joy to be associated and a pull from all that you represent. I see you as a strength for many. And every time I have the blessing of sitting in your space, I'm glad, I'm humbled, and I feel so responsible. Um, in, the, in those moments. So thank you so much again for bringing me here. I don't take it for granted. Um, again, I apologize. I apologize for coming a bit late. Um, it's just because from platform to next voices, you know, uh, I'm just dropping the mic right now. That's why I'm here. So I, I know you know I would never take you for granted or take the, your platform for granted for any reason. Okay. Don't, don't worry. Let's, <laughs> let's just go on. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Zero is, yeah. That's right. Just have to zero into it. Yeah, so for, um, yeah, you know, initially when I was getting married, I I was in that generic blanket of a man has to be the provider in the home. And mm -hmm. I must say that it indeed put me under a lot of pressure, intense pressure, because I felt that my inability to provide was as passion on my manhood. And mm -hmm. that you, my essence as a man is incomplete if I'm not able to produce an income that dwarfs and contains every responsibility in my home, right? Mm. Except that I struggled to sit in that place. I'm one of those people that God did not permit, right, mm. to have their highest expression with that kind of thinking. I guess mm. because of days like this, knowing that my destiny um, is to be a teacher of people and that I have to have the right understanding as a bridge repairer before I can really sit in my office, right? So God did not allow me. I really tried to be the provider mm. in my house, but it, it wasn't working, you know, like mm. I would love to work. You know, God mm. won't have me to work. God did not empower me economically, you know, because mm. at the end of the day, this provider thing we are talking about, what it does is it reduces all of the manhood into economics it mm. pretty much reduces your value your essence your dignity your honor into economics mm. such that you are almost unqualified for dignity and honor and respect the moment mm. for what you are in you get the economic equation wrong right mm. and for a very long time i struggled with that because i didn't think it was god i didn't think that you know all that god embodies we reduce God likeness and mm. being made in God's image to economics, you know, mm. such that I have to pretty much represent all of my human value in some kind of transactional exchange, you know, mm. in whatever context, 
you know i never could settle into it you know but deliverance came when god began to show me that he actually has not given me that responsibility at all that mm. actually as a man there's no grace available for me in scriptures or outside of it to be the breadwinner mm. in my home or to be the provider mm. in my home right and that completely blew my mind. I had to go into scriptures and study. And I began to find that some of the most comforting scriptures that line sense theology and assumptions into that kind of thinking is like the one that says a man that cannot provide for his own is worse than an infidel. You know. Mm. And when I took time to study that PG, I realized, as you know, that the scripture wasn't even talking to me at all as a man. And the yes. scripture was actually talking to widows. And the scriptures was defining the responsibility of Christians to widows. And how widows, and how people who have widows in their family, or even in their neighborhood, or even yeah. in their environment, in their communities, if they don't take responsibility to support those widows, they are worse than infidels. That as a matter of fact, the scripture was not gender sensitive at all. What it says is yeah. that any. He didn't say if any man. He didn't say if any woman. He said if any male or yeah. female will not take yeah. care of his own, especially yeah. of his own household, is worse yeah. than an infidel. And it is in context because every time we want to understand the move of God or his communication in an area, we have to mm -hmm. embrace context. Yes, context is key. But we also have yeah. to move beyond context and consider premise and then move into principles, and move into dispensation, and then move mm. into palliative. Once we yeah. understand that five steps, context, premise, the context of the conversation, the premise yeah. of that conversation, the mm. principles that define that conversation, the dispensation mm. under which that conversation is being held, and the yeah. palliative that that dispensation holds, that makes mm. all the difference. So the context of this conversation, actually, is that if anybody have widows, he was talking to widows and how widows should not be abandoned and how yes. widows should be taken care of and how yes. if you have a widow in your family, you should take care of the widow or you are worse than an infidel. What the mm -hmm. devil is on in hijacking that scripture and manipulating his context, taking it away mm -hmm. from widows and plugging it into marriage context, what it has done mm -hmm. is many Christians and human beings across the world are neglecting widows. And the yeah. Bible says we are worse than infidels. There's rarely mm -hmm. any Christian who doesn't have a widow in his neighborhood or in his family, or, you know, extended or new. That if we neglect that, we are worse than infidels, right? And so by that mm -hmm. definition, so many Christians are worse than infidels already <laughs> because we are not taking responsibility for the widows in our family and in our neighborhood and in our household as we are trying to make that scripture a contest for defining the man. That set me yeah. free. That completely yeah. set me free. However, that does not set me free from the, the necessity of love within my home, meaning yes. that I have a commitment to my family, to society, to be accountable and to be productive. That mm -hmm. I have a duty to take care of my family. But in doing that, the difference is I don't have to be the one with the highest income, but I do have to be the responsibility of productivity and dignity and honor. Now, that yeah. is a, a, an expression of the human condition, male or female. And as a man, the Bible then says that we should give custom to whom custom is due. And in our custom yeah. as Africans, we do have an expectation, even though expectations are not deserved, but we do have mm -hmm. a assumption that a man should show up responsibly. A man should show up responsibly in society yeah. and with now, it does, that does not mean it has to be the one with the highest income. But it, it right. does show that the person has to demonstrate leadership at a level, right, in a way that resource is not missing in the home for any reason. I think that is also a necessary balance so that people don't now receive yeah. instruction to say it's not important for me to even have any form of responsibility at all. And I, I don't know if yeah. I answered the question, PG. I, I, I agree with you very perfectly. You, you, you know, the scripture you quoted, First Timothy 5 and verse 8, if any does not provide for his own or his household, and the Bible, I mean, uh, Paul writing to Timothy there, he started by talking about provision for widows. Yes, sir. And then, uh, and the, the word there, 
was not directed to men only, it's any. So all of us have a responsibility to provide in our homes. Uh, and understanding that also should not mean that men should be irresponsible. It's just that a man should not only be defined by, the, by his economic indices. It, the man is too big to only be seen a whole human being, you know, because life is in pieces and men are in sizes and yeah. there are seasons and times. That's so right. it means that when I'm unable uh, to generate income, uh, it reduces me as a man. And that is not necessarily so. Uh, awesome. Because, I mean, Paul, uh, the apostle was writing somewhere, he says, I've learned to abound and be abased. That yeah. means when there's plenty, I'm still a man. When there is not, there's no much. I'm still yeah. a man. Uh, yeah. said in whatever circumstance I find myself, I've learned to abound and to be abased. Uh, so uh, a man should not slip into depression yes. because right now he doesn't have any income or his income is lower than that of his wife. Yes. What is expected of a man in a season of downward trend of income is high sense of responsibility and leadership. So, yes. so that with the little that you have, you are always on point, you are available, uh, you can create solutions, yes. even solutions that money cannot buy. All right. uh, because when you are affectionate, when you are loving, when you are responsible, uh, then uh, that's, those are not things that money can buy. A man can, be, can have robust you know, economic value, but yet irresponsible. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, 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 love, I love that you, you, you brought that in. Um, but you, you spoke about earlier on in your own life and how you felt like uh, I must be the provider, I must be the provider, you're trying to do everything. And I know in one of our talks, uh, you told me once about how you got into trouble financially. Yes. And you, you over-traded, you over-extended yeah. yourself, you exposed yes. yourself, and then you got into indebtedness. And Pretty. it was it was a serious one. Uh, uh, for men who may be on this platform tonight, or women uh, who know or married to a man who is indebted right now, I just wanted to say something uh, yes, to how that pressure drives people into all yes. kinds of things and yes. how you came out uh, you know, of that situation. Yes. Yes, PJ, thank you so much. You know, for me, if anybody had told me that I would be in that kind of crisis, I will. I thought I'd paid my dues in life. I thought that the way I'd come to Christ, all that I have seen, giving my life to Christ, I thought I was done with crisis. And from here, from this point on, it's just, you know, um, shining brighter and brighter financially, emotionally, socially, in every way. And, and it was like that for a very long time until uh, 1987, actually, was the beginning mm -hmm. of the crisis. And I'm um, sorry, sorry, not 1987, 2007, I mean, sorry. 2007 mm -hmm. was the beginning of it. And we're moving into 2008, the stock market had crashed, if you remember. And yeah. then, you know, things were going upside down. And then um, that affected soon because I used to invest for people, you know, and mm -hmm. things just went, you know, um, you know, down, down. I mean, it was just negative onto negative. I, the, the way I qualified was that I was owing millions of naira, hundreds of mm -hmm. millions. Mm -hmm. and everything in uniform was looking for me, um, from Boy Scouts to Girls Brigade, police, <laughs> <laughs> EFC, speak about it, anything, road safety, anything in uniform was looking for me. My life was upside down. I was persuaded. I remember a mentor called me at that time and said, you know, PK, what you're going to do is just run away. Uh, I, don't, I don't see how you're going to get out of this. Just, just find a way and get out of the country, you know. But, you know, what helped me at that time also was that my 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 name was my business name. I was trading with Shurio Training Network, the SDN group. And I said, if I run away, do I, what, what happened to my last name though? You know, do I, I said, no, I'm going to just face this. And, and I began to pray and say, God help me. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know what I am not going to do. You know, I'm not running anywhere. You know, and, and I always tell men, clarity is overrated. A lot of times, mm -hmm. clarity doesn't have to be um, advanced sense, advancement sensitive. At times, it is consolidated mm -hmm. sensitive. It's not every time you have to know what to do. You are permitted, because of the frailty and the imperfection of the human condition, you are permitted not to always know what you, you should do next. 
You are even permitted not to know what God is up to at every point in time. What you are not permitted to do or not to do is to not know what God cannot be up to. So even if you don't know what God is up to, you should always know what God cannot be up to. If you are in this situation and you are not sure and you are going through pain and discomfort financially or whatever the challenge is, you are not sure what is going on here, but you know that God cannot be setting you up. Mm. You, God cannot put your miracle in the hands of your adversary. Mm. You know that God will not tie you to shame and dishonor. He said for your shame, double honor. Now, yes. I've said to men again and again, crisis is a constant. You don't outgrow warfare. You learn to fight, right? Mm. Tell me that, look, you are going to go through this, but you are going to win. We all have to mature to a place where we lose the fear of whether God will take care of us or not. We have to get to mm. that place. And yeah. we have to that the grace and the favor of God and his mercy transcends perfect behavior. That if mm. perfect is a possibility every time, mercy will be unnecessary. Grace will be mm. unnecessary. Forgiveness will be unnecessary. That all mm. of those emphasize the struggle in the human condition itself. And that wrong judgment is not necessarily a crime, you see. And that yeah. as a human being, you will judge things wrongly. That will put you in circumstances that at times are necessary in your life to humble you under the hand of God. And cause mm. you to render your brain and your hands under God, you see. Mm. We have to come to that place. And I think that was my case. And that's the case of so many men. Society feeds our ego. The reason why we want to do better every time is because of ego. We just can't mm. imagine being out of control. We just can't mm. imagine not being in charge. A lot of times yeah. we're in charge because we want to feel superior to other people. Not because mm. we want to be in charge for capacity to bless our environment, but for capacity yeah. to rule our environment. You know, mm. and God through all of that facade. And God says, no, I need you broken in my hands mm. so that mm. your capacity can be the blessing of people around you, not the oppression yeah. of people around you. Mm. There's this yeah. sense in which we can seek testimony to prove that we are better than others, not because we want to be abandoned under the mercy and the grace of God to be a conduit for others to receive their own blessing, right? Mm. And mm. at times, because of those kind of constructs, God allows us to go through some of these, you know, challenges at times. Mm. But what it does for you is that at the end of the day, all things work together for your good. And, I, and that was what helped me. God began to emphasize to me that all things work together for my good. That if I was perfect, then it means I can make all things work together for myself. But the mm. crisis I am in is in itself a proof that I'm not enough to work it by myself. And so yeah. that promise for me, that promise is not for perfect people. Perfect people don't need things working together. They're already making it work, even though we know the yeah. noise. The person yeah. that can apply perfect behavior and perfect judgment has not been born and will never be born. The only one mm. that was died, is resurrected, and is now seated at the right hand of, of, of God. And that is Christ. Yeah. All of us have to learn to perfect holiness in the fear of God. The best we can have is for our path to continue to shine brighter and brighter like the dawn of the morning until the perfect day. The day of perfection is the day we leave this world. So I accepted that in my life and I began to see God's face as to what I needed to do. And mm -hmm. the moment I made peace within myself. My victory began within me, not outside of me. I came mm. to that place where I knew that God will take care of this and that I will not be put to shame. The Bible says my people will never be put to shame. To be threatened by shame in itself, to be threatened by shame shows that there's something wrong. So mm. wrongness is not the problem because if everything is right, you can't be threatened by shame. So when you are mm. claiming it, like for your shame, double or not, it means that you may be deserving of shame, but there's still a grace that abounds if you look to him to save you and walk with you in that moment. God will save you two minutes to disgrace. God can save yeah. you two minutes into the disgrace, but he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will save yeah. you. At the end That's of the day, safety is not in perfect thinking or perfect judgment. Safety mm. is in this hand, this brain under God. That's safety. Mm. 
this hand, this brain under God. As men, we have to humble ourselves to begin to realize that we need help more than we can possibly admit. And even mm -hmm. if we struggle with our ego with other men, we shouldn't struggle with God to know mm -hmm. that we need that divine help in our work with him so mm -hmm. that we can play our role as men and protect our families as God wants us to and defend our, our role in society as we ought, right? So I set yeah. that with that and I began to um, think and rise based on that. So the next thing I did... So PK, before you go on, yes, I, I just wanted to say this. So from what you've said so far, men will often get into trouble yes, in our quest to be responsible, yes, to sir. be the provider and the protector of our home. Yes, Somebody sir. will put us into trouble, we'll get yes. into economic crisis, we'll yes, get sir. into emotional problem because I can imagine how you felt when you were neck deep in indebtedness in your quest to be a responsible man. Uh, it's, a, it's a terrible feeling because you feel like you have failed completely. Yeah. Uh, if, you is now, if you now find yourself in a situation where maybe your wife is not even encouraging and there, there, there's threat at home and people are chasing you, like you said, everything in uniform was looking for you from SSS to EFCC to <laughs> police to army, everybody... <laughs> So you cannot imagine you will get it. Because some people, some men are listening to us right now. Uh, some may be in this kind of situation or have a friend that's in this situation. But unfortunately, they don't even have the kind of support that they should be getting from home. Because the woman is also showing some kind of attitude that shows that you are a failure. And that kind of terrible feeling. What you've said so far tonight is that that kind of man must find God at yes. that time. Yes. And must live by revelation knowledge that comes from within. Yes. You know, at that yes. material point in time. That's the yes. only antidote to suicide. It's yes. the only antidote to throwing in the towel. And, and you know, and then forgetting about the marriage, forgetting about life. Like you said, a mentor told you, run away from Nigeria. As we That's speak right now, there are so many guys who have gotten into trouble with the economic downturn. Uh, oh, run one business or the other, or one financial business or the other. They are out of Nigeria. They have run. They have run yes. away. They run away, you know. Yes. So, uh, uh, so I, I feel you, I can understand what you're saying perfectly. I, I just, uh, I know you have one or two more things to have before I bring up another question. But I just want to underscore the fact that uh, the God that gave us the responsibility as men to be, uh, to be able to provide and lead our homes and be visionary is also not a God that will leave us Never. when we get into trouble. Never. When we get into trouble, he's always there with us and he yeah. wants to help us to get into, out of that trouble, but know how to do it better another time so we don't get into that same trouble again. Yeah. yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. and I say to people every time, particularly to men, our mistakes does not shock God. He anticipates them. Mm -hmm. And he anticipates them and he prepares for them. That's why he can work together for our good. Because he mm -hmm. has... And I say that there are two types of trouble men get into. Is that your mm -hmm. fault or is the fault of your friends? Mm. Men really have trouble more than that. Most of the time, 90% of the time, when men get into trouble, it's either they are getting into trouble because of their own foolishness or because of association. Mm. What we do tonight is that it shouldn't be your fault, but even when it is your fault, the mm. grace of God is available. You That's will right. never get to it. Now, the, deep, the, the common denominator is lessons. Focus on the lesson. Even mm. if it's your fault and it's the fault, or it's the fault of somebody else, Focus on the lesson, right? Mm -hmm. If you focus on the lesson, God is guaranteed to come through for you. It may That's be right. two years before disgrace. It may be mm -hmm. two minutes before disgrace. At times, it could be two minutes into the disgrace, but mm -hmm. it will come through for you. You That's must right. have that fear of whether God will take care of you or not. He will take mm -hmm. care of you. That, for me, is priceless, man of God. That's, that's, that's great. That's great. Some great thought there. Great thought that God will take care of you. Uh, so for all the men joining us this evening, uh, whatever time it is where you are, uh, maybe have to know in North America and uh, other places, uh, I need you to understand that God will take care of you. And for the women who are on the platform as well, when your men get into trouble, please support them. Uh, join God to watch over them and to take care of them. 
Because a man that was in trouble today will raise his head tomorrow and lift his head above the water. And he wants to look around and find his woman and healing him and helping him to come out of that emotional tumor. And, and that's how a, a, a great woman is also defined uh, by being the kind of support system that is right. dependable, sustainable, and durable. <laughs> you know, there are some support systems that are not durable. When you go through a rough time, yeah. uh, they are like fake vehicles, you know. When, yeah. you're, when you're driving a four wheel uh, and you go through a uh, hair, it stands. But when you see uh, uh, something that's not durable or dependable, uh, I'm just encouraging because I know lots of women are also on the platform tonight. Uh, God wants our women to be that, uh, uh, you know, uh, durable, dependable, reliable support yeah. system, even in the face of trouble and affliction and whatever our men go through. And God will bless you as you provide our support in Jesus' name. Uh, so, uh, uh, PK, is there uh, an internal temperamental str struggle that limits men from finding personal fulfillment? Internal, you know, uh, temperamental or emotional struggle uh, which ones can you remember that limits men from finding uh, uh, fulfillment? Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, like I myself as an example. Um, mm. you know, psychologically, studies have shown that all adults' behavior is rooted in experiences in childhood. All adult behavior, not some. That all adults' behavior is rooted in experiences in childhood and mm. all of us have contests that we cannot recall because they happened to us when we were not mature enough to record that experience and put it in perspective but mm. those things go on into our life as programs and they govern our thinking govern our behavior impact on our attitude and they have the capacity to appear in our public life without our consent right mm. And that is what programs do. And we were born innocent. You know, a minute after we were born innocent, we became victims because we fell into the hand of adults. And for the next 18 years, 15 years, we have no way of auditing what the adults were pouring into us, how much more to mm -hmm. resist. It. So mm -hmm. if our parents were wise, or we live in a wise environment that is balanced and true, we have a high propensity to turn out wise. If our mm. parents are foolish or unguarded by any reason, or our environments are weak and unsettled for any reason, we have a high propensity to turn out weak, powerless, foolish, you know, unsettled, just because of the influences we were born into. Because no one is self-made. We are all products of influences. And at mm. the end of the day, we are victims because we have no control over our necessary due human experiences. And I say mm. it every time that a victim a slave and a poor person are all equal. They are all captured within the same definition. Whether you are a victim or you are a slave or you are poor, the three of them are simply incapable of controlling their due human experiences. The moment you have no control over your necessary due human experiences, you are either a victim or you are poor or you are a slave is the same definitions that capture the three. Now, as a child, you are innocent for only one second that you arrive mm. in the world. A second after you are a victim. You are a victim because for 18 years or less or more, depending on the environment you grew up in, you are out of control. You are not in control of your necessary human experiences. And once mm. you can control that, you are a victim. The parents of your life are going to begin to pour what they understand. And they're going to pour it sincerely. Now, people are sincerely, mm. people are sincerely poor. People are sincerely mm. poor. People are sincerely foolish. Every foolishness mm. is a strategy. Nobody sat down to say, when I become 45, I will be foolish. You know, it's not a strategy. It's not an invented experience. People mm. are influenced into a contest that define their reputation, either with wisdom value or foolish value, whichever way they represent some kind of contest that does not work for the peace mm. or the relief of their immediate environment, otherwise called the family. Mm. And so sincerely, they are going to begin to pour their ignorance, their fear, their naivety into their children, right? 
And so yeah. that's, that's my case, PG. I, I was in a body house at the age of three, PG. At the age mm. of three, I was in a body house. My son is 10 today. I, I can't imagine him in a body house. How much more at the age of three? Those days wow. in, in Lagos, we used to have baby classes, right? I was in baby class, and I was in boarding house. At the age of three, I was still, I still poo, I, I still wee. You know, I wasn't speaking clearly, and I was in a boarding house away from my parents. You know, for a wow. very long time, I couldn't feel anything, PG. I, I, I had to grow under God to, to learn compassion. I, because mm. as a three-year-old in boarding house, I compartmentalized everything. I was dealing mm. with seniors, seniors who were mm. mean, who were, who were having pleasure. They were also victims of the seniors mm. they knew, but they were busy mm. practicing what they suffered on me. And, you know, mm. I was abused. I was sexually abused, you know, as a young child growing up amongst, you know, in 1982, 1981, wow. secondary school students were playing for Green Eagles. People like Stephen Keshi, Henry Wosu were playing for Green Eagles for the national team those days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just in school, and our, our school, that was when they canceled boarding houses from Lagos. So we were in a mm -hmm. private boarding house that housed secondary school students. So we had nursery school students in the school, in boarding house. We had primary school mm -hmm. students in, in the boarding house. We had secondary school students in the boarding house. Wow. We have a three-year-old in that same boarding house. And so, apart from that, I grew up in a polygamous home. You know, in a polygamous mm -hmm. home, you, you, first of all, you know, grew up with people who are from another mother in the same house, mm -hmm. or who bear your last name. You are both Shurians. All of you are Shurians. But your mm -hmm. dad tells you that they are your siblings. Your mom tells you they are your adversaries. You know, mm -hmm. a young child, that's too much for you. You wouldn't know. But by the time you become an adult, you become incapable of trusting anyone. Because you couldn't even trust people who bear your last name in your same house. When your mom is going out, she would rather go and keep you with a friend 10 houses away than leave you in the mm. same house with people who bear your last name. That's too much for a child. You know, yeah. the polygamous home, you learn to pursue the best things in life for the wrong reasons. That was That's my right. experience. Your mom wants you to be first in class, not because of the ideal of excellence. She wants yeah. you to be first in class because when you are first in class, it impresses your father who then releases resources your mother's way. So, mm. in other words, as a child, you are being taught to pursue the best things in life for the wrong reasons. By the time you yeah. become adults, you become incapable of visionary expressions. All you mm. know is ambitious expressions. All you yes. know is pursuing the loftiest things in life for the wrong reasons. Again, mm. you become so competitive because mm. of your parents, and you become suspicious, unnecessary. Yeah. They say, don't let That's somebody talk your head. Don't eat here. Don't go to this place. They are trying to kill you here. There's no way any child can, can interpret that or internalize and process that, right? And that, yeah. those wounded me, PG, for, for so mm -hmm. many years. You know, even when I became a Christian, I will say this on the, on the public domain, even when I became a Christian for so many years, maybe about seven or eight years ago or ten years ago was when mm -hmm. I began to understand God as a father. Because mm. my father died at the age of 83. In, mm. I never heard I love you in my house. I never heard I love you in my The only place I hear I love you is in maybe comics or, or movies. I never heard it in my house. I never had my, saw my dad and mom having emotional conversation. M me mm. and my dad, in all his life, my father died when I was 31. When I was mm. 30, myself and my dad never sat down one day to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. And I don't judge him. Let's be clear. Mm. I don't judge mm. him. He provided, yeah. he labored for me to make sure I had the best yeah. education. He ministered to my brain, but he couldn't minister to my heart and my soul. And mm. society punished me, not for what was in my head, because society does not punish you for what is, what is in your head. Society mm. punishes you for the poverty of your soul. And mm. My, my father could not make enough contribution deep in my solica content. So I was funded mm -hmm. when I began to exchange mm -hmm. with people. First in class is not first in life. You can have mm -hmm. all the brilliance to pass exams, but to pass the school of life is a different ball game altogether. And so yes, I struggled. By the time I got married, I didn't know God. I knew God as the, the, the monarch. I knew God, the power, the force. 
I did not mm. know God the Father. I didn't mm. know a precious God. I did not understand mm. a merciful, compassionate God. Mm. I understood God. a force. I understood mm. a power. I understood a king. I understood mm. a system. I never understood the heart of God, right? And for yeah. so many years, I could not forgive myself on so many things. In the same yeah. way, I struggled to forgive others. In the same yeah. way, I struggled to walk in compassion. I was principled mm. onto error. I analyzed mm. on paralysis because a mm. lot of what I understood were more, were more transactional than relational, mm. right? Mm. And, and it affected my marriage. It took me over about seven to nine years of marriage to begin to understand the possibilities in love, right? Mm. I could not offer my wife love at a level because I didn't have it. And it took That's me right. almost... And she grew up in an environment where her dad loves her to bits. And yeah. she had that expectation from her husband. And I struggled yeah. because I reasoned everything out. I reasoned mm. every, everything was a matter of the head. A matter of the head. Mm. It, yeah. it took me time. Yeah. I began to settle into the possibilities mm. of the heart. And I say to people, mm. it took me about seven to nine years of marriage to realize I would rather be at peace and in love than be right. Yeah. I would rather be yeah. And be right. The pursuit mm. of justice is always a possibility. The articulation mm. of justice is always within reach. But every time mm. you fight justice, you trade your peace for it and you compromise your love for it. And I want yeah. all the justice, all the arguments in the house, there's no love left and there's no peace left. Mm. I have to begin mm. to grow out of that. And even now, I'm still growing mm. into that. So, okay, my, you know, you know I identify, I yeah. identify with you quite a lot. Mm. In terms of, because I also grew up in a polygamous home. In fact, um, if I knew we we're going to dive into this polygamy thing today, I would have prepared more for it because I was thinking next week I'm going to have a talk with maybe Prince Bowe where we're going to discuss polygamy from yeah. this, um, you know, uh, from his own perspective of marriage and family life and all. I was yeah. still telling them in church yesterday that all these things going on on social media where people are over glorifying polygamy, these are people who did not grow up in polygamy. If That's you grew up in polygamy, you will not over glorify polygamy. You will not be yeah. recommending it in this generation. Every generation yeah. should be an improvement on the previous, uh, yeah. not to go back to what almost destroyed us. Because yeah. I grew up in a home with you know four wives and all that. And everything you said, just like somebody on the platform said, this is my life that PK was describing. That was what somebody wrote. He said, this yeah. is my life that PK was describing. It, it's also my life that you're prescribing. When you grow up in a polygamous home, you, you see life as a battlefield. That's it. And you know your metaphor for life, whether you see life as a journey, you see life as a battle, you see life as transaction, you know, your metaphor for life is very important. Yeah. How do you see life? When you grow up in a polygamous setting, you see life as a battlefield. That's why, just like you said, the first five to six or seven years of my own marriage was just like your own. Argument every day, because yeah. the polygamous home, you must make sense. You must fight your battle. You That's must it. pull through. Everybody is fighting for the national cake. And <laughs> if you don't fight, you'll be relegated to the background. <laughs> you know, so you now get into a place where fight is not necessary, struggle is not necessary, and you still want to bring your whole game on because That's how you have been brought up. And there are many men who are like that, who yes. it, it may not even be a polygamous situation, but the things that they've been indoctrinated with, you yes. know, that a man, you have to be a man, you have to, you know, you have to stand up for yourself. No woman should rubbish you and all that. So before a woman says, hey, you have said A, B, C, D, because you are expecting that a woman will want to, you, you, you know, use authority over you and all that. So I get you very, very clearly. It just, uh, it just gives us a lot of struggle when we start out on the wrong premise. Uh, in fact, I still, uh, I still have uh, a lot of, uh, I don't know how to put it in my heart for you, for going out to the boarding house at the age of three. Uh, that's one of the most terrible things that I can imagine has happened to any human being <laughs> on earth, you know, to, to, be, to be left into the hands of carers at the age of three. It, it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting one, but I, I will thank God for still making you the PK that we know today, even after all those horrific experiences of childhood. And we see how those things actually, like you said, create a frame in us that then keep affecting how we see life and how we walk through things as a man 
um, so uh, let's uh, start to wrap this up. I don't want to take too much of your of, of your time. So um, we're, we're going to give an opportunity for people to ask one or two questions, but we'll take this one last one, and then maybe we'll, we'll, we should wrap up in 10 minutes, five minutes for this, and then we'll take five minutes, you know, one or two questions that we can handle. Uh, so in the rapidly evolving world, uh, how, 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 how should men deal with uh, changing metrics to measure their performance as men in the context within which they operate? So the metrics keep changing. Sometimes we see that a, a man is the one with six packs, especially in this day of social media. So you see somebody says, I don't mind the pot belly, just make sure you have money. Some other person says, to hell with your money. Uh, just, you know, it's six packs uh, and you have to. Uh, somebody says, uh, uh, I love men who are, I mean, men, a man should be, uh, should be compassionate. And then someone says a man should be, you know, uh, strong and brutal and you know just bully his way through uh, there are so many things i mean we talked about the issue of a man being a provider or having money and different things like that there's so many things that we 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 uh we have used to measure men or to describe men and they keep changing and facilitating depending on uh where things are generally as our world goes through a particular kind of crisis uh the, the expectation that we have for men changes. Just like the expression we have of women also changes, but tonight we choose to discuss the one for men. Maybe on that time I'll bring a woman and we'll discuss the one for women. But for night, tonight we're discussing men and I'm sure the women even on the platform are enjoying this. Piki, what do you say to that in, in yes, two to three minutes? It's one of the greatest struggles of the 21st century man. You know, mm. the idea that his essence is defined by you know, um, standards he that are not non that are not existential at all. You mm. know, it's a good thing to understand temperaments because temperaments are natural. Personalities are formed, right? And the way people have interpret temperaments, however, is onto weakness. You find people who are introverts justify their inability to make social connections. You know. Mm. I, I, people don't believe it when I say that I'm an introvert. They don't believe it. You know, they say, what, you? They don't understand that <laughs> when I'm out there with people doing my thing, I'm acting what I needed to do. I'm a necessary guy. The question mm. I would ask people is, what is the temperament of Jesus? You know, you know the idea is not that Jesus does not have temperament, but is able to be a necessary guy. Whatever mm. temperament is inside of you, should be able to contain your moments. Mm. So you cannot say because you are, you know, introverted, introverted, therefore you cannot talk to a type of people or you cannot engage in society or you cannot play some roles in a company. Maybe you can't function in a sales role just because you are introverted. Mm. Introvertism mm. is not negative. It's God's design. It doesn't refuse mm. you. There's a reason why you are introverted, introverted. And that does not make you weak than anyone in the world. The extrovert is not guaranteed millions. Neither does is the introvert denied millions of dollars. The, there are extroverts in jail as much as there are int introverts in jail. And there are successful introverts as there are successful extroverts. We hold it to ourselves to understand whether we are sanguine or melancholy or whatever temperament that we are, to understand that to produce value in our community, in our immediate environment, is I... It's, a, it's existential, it's a duty that, that mm. we have to rise to regardless of those temperaments. So they don't limit us in any way. If anything, they strengthen us. The peculiarity of how they are expressed, however, are different. For that, mm. we need education. And that education should be pursued because those education does not come to you naturally. Somebody has to sit you down to begin to explain these things to you. In the same way that you have to qualify to understand your body, you have to mature, you have to read. Your body is given to you as a natural gift, but you can destroy your body by yourself. You can ruin your body by yourself, except you go for education to know what you should eat, what you should not eat, how to walk your body, how to sleep, how to exercise. Now, mm -hmm. if you don't do all of those things and access that education, it doesn't make your body mine. It is still yours except that you are going to suffer for the unguardedness 
of not attaining education to manage your body excellently. So that is how we are. But society has gone ahead in a post-truth world to actually attempt to capture everybody within, you know, um, blocks of expressions that doesn't fit into our design. So they say stuff like, because you are a man, you shouldn't cry. Because you are a man, you know, you should not do this and do that. And there are just different labels, different stereotypes that are on the, on the male man, even on the, on the, on the you know, uh, uh, female man as well. The idea is there is a freedom that we all have to understand that yeah. we born with a design that it is our duty to go out of our way to understand the design of the product called you so that you can manage that product very well. Now, in those days of, in Bible days, there were no, God has not released the type of awareness, intelligence, and education that can give us a medical doctor as we have today. Science was not as advanced as it is today. Therefore, God had to by himself reach out to people when they need the kind of solutions that doctors are provided today. In the same way, we did not have therapies, we didn't have psychologists, we didn't have medical doctors as we have today. So God was, because he will never leave us nor forsake us, and he will not put our miracle in the hands of our adversaries. So he will take care of us regardless. The moment he began to give us the strength, the capacity with skills, you know, through science, through art, you know, through mm. culture, through tradition, when we began to gain understanding, right, God expects us to be able to assess that education. And when we know better, we do better. And yeah. so I tell people, go out of your way to become more emotionally intelligent. The world is like a market. No matter who you are or what you came to do, people will sell you what they prefer. If you have one dollar in your pocket, it doesn't stop somebody from telling you to come and buy a fragrance of 50,000 50, naira or, 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 or $200. Even though all you have in your pocket is $5. They don't care. It's either you buy it or you don't buy it. It's either you want it or you don't want it. Or you don't want it. So the world will sell what it wants. The error mm. of exchange is not in determining what people want to sell to you. It's in being clear about who you are, what you are about, and what you came to buy. And once mm. you have that understanding, no matter what is being presented to you, you can walk away from those things. And I say to people, if all you know how to say in this world is yes, you will be used, abused, taken for granted, abandoned many times, cheated so many times. Know mm -hmm. the most powerful word, about the most powerful word in the world. People have to grow to learn to say no. No to popular opinions. No yeah. to wrong stereotypes known to pressure either from the media or from television you know or from entertainment or from you know popular news or from popular culture we have to learn to be our own person and, and the That's way to do that essentially is to learn is just to learn and keep learning as a christian and as a person of faith right i always recommend that people spend time in knowing about their manufacturer which is god himself Right, and mm -hmm. that is spending time in the word. Spend time in the word. Find time to learn about God. And once the more you learn about God, the more God introduces you to you. You see, people don't know. They think that learning about God is about mastering God. God does not need to be mastered. It is who he is, is he doesn't have adjustable esteem. So your cooperation right with him does not enlarge him, it enlarges you. You know mm. God so that you can know more of yourself. Draw mm. near unto me, right? And then automatically, right, you are drawing near to value. The idea is that the more of God you pursue, the more of you you get to know. So mm. you, the more of God you know, the more of yourself you understand. You know, yeah. that is a very important part of that mix. So I tell people, if you want to know yourself, get into the word of God, know God more. But also mm. in addition to that, Learn about the knowledge that God has given to men freely. Knowledge about the human body. Knowledge about the human mind, the human soul, the human spirit. God mm. has given knowledge through psychology, sociology, through medicine, you know, through you know, all kinds of health dynamics out there. We should keep learning so that we can be better managers of ourselves. 
It's just that's critical for right. them to do so, right? So yeah. that will be the safety net that I will tell people. The idea, like I said at the platform today, every human being is enslaved by something. There's mm. no human born of a woman that is not yeah. enslaved to something. True yeah. freedom is the ability to choose what enslaves you. True That's freedom right. is the ability to choose what enslaves you. For example, mm -hmm. if you follow God at a level, you will be a slave of righteousness. Slavery is That's not the problem. It's what is enslaving mm -hmm. you to the problem. And so yeah. we have to mature to seek. Since slavery is a necessity for the human condition, we should be mm -hmm. a slave of wisdom, for example. I should be mm -hmm. a slave of prudence. I should be a slave of understanding. I should be a slave mm -hmm. of love. I don't want freedom mm -hmm. from love. I want freedom to be my master. I want love mm -hmm. to be my master. So we should not in any way allow ourselves and our souls and spirit to live independent of necessary rules and necessary conditioning, particularly those virtues that amplify our humanity above all. Right? Mm -hmm. I think if we learn to put those things in our lives, you know, pursue God's presence, get comfortable with alone with God, you know, get comfortable alone with God in prayer, mm -hmm. in worship, in Bible study. And please, I'm not recommending that you pray like PG or that you study the Bible like PK or to spend time in God's presence like PG or, or read all the books that PG reads or study the Bible like PG. Reading the Bible is a point of contact. You will mm -hmm. never leave. You will never read the Bible enough to know enough of the Bible. Whatever right. you read is just a point of contact for God to pour more into you. So stay yeah. in the world. If it's a chapter you can do, do it, but do it clearly and diligently. If it's mm -hmm. too many you can spend in prayer, do it, but do it a lot and well, and God will multiply it by itself. I think yeah. the more of God we allow ourselves to behold, as we behold his presence in the mirror, the stronger we are in society, the more mm -hmm. useful we are in the culture, the more definite we are, and almost impenetrable we become. Um, I think that is the, way, the kind of positioning we should give ourselves, particularly as children of God. Yeah. Thank you very much, PK. That, that was very insightful. And I will say a lot of the questions that people are asking are already answered with, within the, you know, the context of what you just described right now. How do I get myself through that phase? where the things uh, that seek to enslave me uh, from my background, from my childhood, are uh, diminishing my capacity uh, to give expression to my manhood and the, the, the sheer level of uh, responsibility that God has put upon my life. It's about getting back into God and, uh, you know, and, and soaking yourself into God and allowing God to redefine who you are to you as we look into the mirror faintly. Uh, you know, the Bible says we behold the glory of God and we're changed. We're transformed yes. from one level of glory onto another as by the Spirit of God. So I can see myself differently when I choose to see myself through the mirror of God's Word. Uh, and, uh, you know, the Word of God, the Bible says, is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. What, it, what happens is that it has a way of cleaning up memories, uh, you know, subjecting thoughts and imaginations and memories to the will of God and the purpose of God. Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not kind of but mighty in God to be pulling down of strongholds, imagination, I thoughts to the obedience of God. These strongholds, these imaginations, these thoughts, I thoughts are things that you have described as uh, you know the the the, the configuration uh, or the setting with which we have been uh, that has been imputed into us as we are growing. Whether about our temperament, about how we grew up, our background, it's all about programming. And okay. when you program in such a way, uh, in a particular way, what will come out of that programming will just be uh, your, your necessary life, your real life right now. And that can be changed because we can reprogram ourselves through the word of God, even as men, and we see life in a different way. I think one other thing I just wanted to add to what Pika had said uh, is the necessity of mentorship for men. Yeah. Yeah, the necessity of mentorship for men. I have a, a, a plan uh, to spring up some kind of mentoring for uh, men under 40. And Piki, I'm going to bring you into that loop. I know uh, 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 you, you, it's something that you love. When I'm able to do it, I'm going to bring you in. Uh, I know that a lot of men on this platform this evening, if I say, register now, 
uh, to get into this uh, mentorship, they're going to jump in. Uh, but when you hear the announcement, uh, please jump in. I, I want a situation where uh, with some of my friends, we can pour into men a bit more. Uh, all of us are products of mentoring. I have benefited so greatly from mentoring. You know, uh, my major mentor uh, was my pastor, uh, you know, Sam Adeyemi, uh, and many other people who have mentored me. Uh, the way my life has shaped out, you know, the effect of polygamy, the effect of uh, all kinds of things, all, you know, all kind of bully, all kind of, or whatever, you know, <laughs> on one's life, you know, uh, the, the, the effect of going to some terrible body house where I, I went to a, a, a boys only school. You can imagine wow. <laughs> in, the, in the 80s uh, where you learn all the vices available in yeah. life. From all, all. <laughs> very unguarded, very, you know, just everything is just thrown at you. And then yes. you come out of that place, you become a, a, a terrible man at that. Uh, today, we're still talking to men about don't hit your wife, don't, don't, don't abuse them emotionally and all that. Some of us grew up in too much of abuse not to, not to be abusive in life yes. because garbage in, garbage out. That's and it. when you have been abused before, uh, you know, uh, uh, somebody that has been abused has a tendency to abuse other people. Correct. Because that's, what, that's the life that you have known. And it's Correct. in Christ that all those things are changed and washed away. And through mentoring as well, then you get the opportunity to uh, for a bit of reprogramming, especially yeah. when your heart is open. And then you can see how things can be done differently right. and how yeah. life can be seen from a different point of view. Uh, Thank you very much, Pika. I'm just going to look at one or two okay. uh, questions that people may have posted here, uh, and and uh, we'll, we'll look through those questions and and start to wrap this up. I don't want to take too much of your time. I I also have had to negotiate <laughs> with my <laughs> girls here that by about eight thirty p.m. Nigerian time I'll be off the because I'm supposed to watch a movie with them this evening. So oh, yeah, yeah, those yeah. are some of the responsibilities of men, you know. So and when we, <laughs> things, we, have to, <laughs> we have to be able to uh, live up to expectation. Uh, so uh, somebody, let me see. Um, I just want to see a few questions. Um, uh, all right. I said by my own person to know more about. Okay, okay. Just repeating what you said, but I, I feel like I'd seen some questions earlier on the chat and I wanted to be uh, to be able to pick up some of those uh, some of those questions um, uh, if anyone has a question please uh, feel free uh, to, to, to put it on right now um, uh, but yeah uh, uh, I, I'm just well, uh, these things are coming in so fast that, <laughs> that it's difficult <laughs> to pick up. I wanted to look at some of the older questions on the platform. Uh, somebody said, please, how can uh, mentoring be affordable? Don't worry, we're bringing up affordable mentoring. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> affordable mentoring is coming. Uh, all right. Um, uh, okay, PK, I, 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 I am struggling to be able to get back to some of those questions, but I'm sure there will be some new ones. So I'm just going to scroll back to some of the latest comments and I'll see if we can uh, get some of... Uh, somebody said, uh, PK, how should a man love? Another person, uh, okay, how should a man love? That's a whole seminar topic. That, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Someone asked that how did PK get out of, of debt? Uh, okay. Well, you mentioned some of those things, but maybe we'll give you an opportunity, uh, a one minute opportunity to say yes. one or two things again about that. And we had the question uh, of how how should men love to eat? Yes. I know you can't talk to it fully, yes. but just attempt it and I will yes. add something to it. Yes. Go ahead. PK. I'll deal with that real quick. First of all, on so I've spoken about the inside job on getting out of crisis. Part of the outside job for getting out of debt is to begin by owning, taking responsibility. Don't pass the buck, accept that it's all your fault, whatever it is, own it, 
Be clear about what you owe. Document it. Stop running away. Pick calls. Every time you don't pick calls, you are empowering the curiosity and anxiousness of your creditors to wonder what you are up to. And you are increasing their sense of viciousness to attack you because they think you are running away. So pick calls. Nobody can slap you through a call or arrest you through a phone call. The, every call you pick, as a matter of fact, give you the opportunity to assess the thinking of your creditors so that you know where their mind is, what they are saying. They can use all their F words, but at least it's through phone. You can delete that later. But pick your calls. But most importantly, get a lawyer. Get a lawyer to be clear about all that you owe. Arrange a meeting with your, your, your creditors one after the other. Or write to them, right, first of all, and arrange a meeting. Let your lawyer begin to deal, because it's a civil matter. You didn't steal, you didn't cheat, you're not a criminal. You'd make wrong decisions, things went bad, right? And so get your lawyer involved. Stop talking to people. Let your lawyer also file for fundamental human rights with the police so that nobody comes to pick you up. People don't know that they have that power. Nobody should come and be picking you up in your house and arresting you. It's not, it's not, I didn't know that for a long time, but I learned that through my crisis. So if anybody arrests you, sue the police for, sue the Inspector General of Police, I, I sue them for your fundamental human right. They will write all that police stations want to come near you. Then you have the freedom to begin to think because nobody can now come and arrest you. Once you buy yourself that thinking space, right, you cannot begin to work. Let everybody know I want to pay you. Commit to paying something. Don't commit to what you cannot pay. Don't be under pressure and say, I will pay next month when you know you have no money to pay. Be honest. Get your lawyer in and say, I need one year. I'm going to, if I'm going to pay you, I'm not going to go and steal to pay you. I need to work. If you don't let my business work, I cannot pay you. So you have to be bold and you have to be audacious. It's not the end of the world and you're not, you not, you not a criminal. So call them to order. Let your lawyer get in. Fight for more time so that you can have, if you need one year, ask for it. And then once you begin to pay, make a commitment. Don't say I will pay you 1 million every month or 10 million every month or 200 million every month. Say every month I will pay you something, no matter how small. Commit to something. I remember one woman I was owing about, I can't remember how much, maybe 8 million or something. I remember one, one month I paid her 5K, 5,000 naira. She called me and said, what is this? I said, it's payment. I am re I'm now owing you whatever I'm owing you, 5K less. I committed to paying you something every month and I'm paying it. One day it will be 12 million. Another day it will be 5 million. Another day is 5,000. You take it. You see, every month and then the money I make every month, I break it into two. 50% of it goes into the continuity of my life and the sanity of my soul. 50% I used to pay debts. I don't pay debts with every money in my hand. Otherwise, all these guys will watch you die. And when you die, they will move on. So you need balance. If 100K come into your life, take 50K to put back in your business for you to be balanced. The remaining 50% use that to manage your debt. If you share that into 12 of them and it is 225 that, that gets to them this month, so be it. Another day, it is 250K that will reach them. Another day, it's 2.5 million each that will reach them. By the fourth month, it's 225 again. So be it. But you are paying it down. Right? And one day you can start to say you hold no man on the face of the earth. Right? Mm -hmm. You need that kind of commitment. You need that debt management strategy. And you'll be free in no time because God will help you. Right? In terms of love, me, I don't have too much to say. I tell people, get better in saying yes in the home. Whatever your wife wants, there's only three rules. Whatever your wife wants, do it. Number two, whatever your wife wants, do it. Number three, whatever your wife wants, remind yourself of one and two and do it. You see, the moment you learn to do whatever your wife wants, you won't believe the kind of power and freedom that will reign in your home. Now, that does not mean you should just abandon yourself and approve anything she wants. Mm -hmm. The only time you are allowed to say no is when what she's asking to do is destiny sensitive. If it's not mm -hmm. destiny sensitive, let it go. It doesn't matter. What do you lose? You are, that's why you are a man. Just let it go. You are a creature of reasoning. Emotions does not overpower you. So let it go, right? Now, I say to people every time, every yes you, you say empowers your no in the day of usage. Mm -hmm. Every yes you say today empowers your no in the days of usage. When you learn to say yes, yes to anything she wants, the day you say no, she will say, hmm, there must be something here because your default is yes. She's not used to you saying yes, to saying mm -hmm. no. So the day you say no out of your many yeses, it's easier for her to put value on that no. In the same mm. way, if all you know how to say is no, 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 even the day you say yes, it will not have any meaning. 
because That's she right. can't place any value on your yes. She will just think it's a script. So yeah. how do you love? I think you love by empowering the strength around you. Perfect love casted out fear. The way to love is to eliminate fear around you. When you mm -hmm. love, you eliminate fear. People have the freedom to come to you with the best and worst of themselves and look up to you for inspiration. When you love, you give people empowerment. The only way to remain powerful is to make other people powerful, right? That is the way it works. And when you think about love in that context, I think you'll be fine and your family will be fine. That's right. Thank you very much, PK. That's, that's really powerful. I love all the things you said about how you came out of indebtedness and how people should manage. I hope somebody has picked something from there. Uh, get protection for yourself. Get a good lawyer. Get legal advice. Uh, pick the cause of your, 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 your creditors. Make sure that you pay something on a monthly basis and you have to keep living whilst you're coming out of debt. Don't die before your time uh, because of indebtedness. Everybody exists to be rolled away one day. Jesus has paid for all of our burdens, but the actualization of it will require some human effort and the understanding of the context in which you are playing. Uh, if not, you will be a silly Christian who is confessing the word of God, but does not know how to actualize it in the context of your environment. And that's what I think PK has put in the hands of men who may be indebted right here this evening. And learn to say yes, 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 in the non-destiny sensitive issues that will come out from your conversation with your spouse. Say yes, allow them to have their way. In the destiny sensitive areas, they will be more responsive uh, in, uh, to you when you ask for a better negotiation or even when you have to say a complete no. Uh, but it's, it, it's a terrible case where you are always saying no, 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 no. <laughs> All right, uh, PK, uh, time, our time is completely gone. There are some questions in, uh, in the in the uh, you know in the in the uh, DM or whatever you know, what they call it on Instagram, uh, yeah. say PK and PG, uh, what is your view on a man's leadership in the home? Uh, somebody else has a question: How does family leadership affect uh, political and national leadership? Uh, we won't be able to to take all the question, uh, but I'll say something to it and I'll have P, uh, PK for a final word. Uh, 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 family, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, so the person that asked the question, what is your view on a man's leadership at home? A man's leadership at home, in my opinion, it, it, it's, it's defined in different ways. At home, a man is a protector. Uh, your wife needs a sense of security, and a man should be able to make a woman and the children secure. Um, don't use your energy, your, your physical build, and your sense just for yourself. One of the things that make relationships fail is selfishness. When a man is perceived as being selfish, the woman will suffer in that relationship. Or when a man is actually selfish, yeah. And the, 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 a man in his home should be the one that is selfless in every area, including finance, in the way you spend your time and your energy and, you know, whatever. Be selfless. That's what really makes a good uh, mix of uh, or, you know, a good leader at home. So the man in the home is not an authoritarian, is not uh, a, a dictator, is a selfless leader uh, who wants to invest and who sees as a privilege to lead a home and who is not uh, saying the equality of the woman at home. Yeah. Uh, because even Jesus had to stoop low to our level and became equal with us. And we're right. joint heirs of this salvation, joint heirs with Christ. Somebody came and paid for your salvation, and you are still joint heirs with that person. So what about in the home? Our outcome is not so difficult for us to see our spouses as joint heirs of the same grace. And that's what the Apostle Paul was advising us about. See women as joint heirs with you of the same grace, just as Christ saw you as joint heirs with him. And when you have that, then you know it's the same way Christ uh, sacrificed himself for us. We have to keep sacrificing. And somebody will say, oh, uh, this thing is not balanced. So why is it always guilt in the direction of men? That's why we're men. Uh, a leader must take extra responsibility. Some people say in their home, uh, the man uh, and woman should share responsibility 50-50. You lost your leadership. <laughs> yeah, 
you lost your leadership. Even if it's one percent, take fifty-one, so that yeah. you know that this leadership that I, I am holding on to, that God has made me a leader, that God has made me, connotes responsibility, and I'm going to take extra responsibility in my home. That's how I believe we should, you know, we should live. I mean, live in our home. Um, um, somebody saying, oh, uh, people in the diaspora can benefit from the mentorship program. Yes, because it's going to be virtual. So from anywhere in the world that you are, you, you just need to connect as at the time we want to connect. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to put information out on these platforms there. Uh, and um, uh, like you've heard, PK tonight is also uh, 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 going to be a part of it. Yes. Uh, yes. One way or the other as we structure it out. I mentor yes. pastors and all that, but now I want yes. to just mentor men. I just yes. have a body for men and I want to be able to mentor men uh, because I believe my work as a leadership coach is not complete until uh, we're raising leaders at home, uh, leaders in career, and not just leaders in church because what I've invested a lot of my time into uh, in the last five to 10 years is to uh, pour into leaders in the church and pastors a lot. I'm going to continue to do that, especially through the Exponential Network, which PK is also a part of, but we're yeah. going to then also just mentor men generally. So uh, um, how does uh, uh, family leadership affect pol politics and national development? Uh, uh, it, it's very simple. The family is at the bedrock of the yeah. society. Uh, when, when the family turns out well, you will churn out great kids who will end up building uh, the corporate se sector, the social sector, the political sector, and the, 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 the country will get better. All the people stealing our money in third world countries, especially Nigeria, where we're speaking from tonight, uh, they were raised by certain parents. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All the, uh, uh, the corrupt governors, corrupt senators, corrupt president, they came out from a home. Yeah. Uh, um, I remember speaking with someone who was a sitting minister at the time, I don't want to mention me. And the person told me, said, look, PG, the reason why I can tell you today that I know I'm within a corrupt government, but I'm not corrupt. This was many years ago. This is not even a current dispensation. Uh, is because of the values I gained from my parents. Because I asked the person, when you become a minister in a country like Nigeria, uh, luxury becomes the order of the day. And one of the things that can derail uh, a person who is not sensitive to destiny is the quest for luxurious living. Yeah. The quest for luxurious living. Uh, when you fly first class, you don't want to come down from first class the rest of your life. When you wear a uh, designer today, you don't want to step down from there the rest of your life. It's a good feel, but what about if it's not available? That's what leads people into corrupt practices. When you don't know how to abound and be abased. And this person said, look, it's the value I got from my parents. That is what is keeping me. That's why I can operate in this environment and still gain, I mean, regain or uh, retain some level of sanity and integrity. Uh, um, PK, uh, your final word as we sign up. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to encourage everyone to watch this space for the mentoring platform for men that PG had mentioned. I also want to encourage everyone to hang in there, know that there's a light ahead of you. The whole of your future and your dreams are running towards you. God has you in mind. His thoughts for you are plans of good, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope, to bring us all to an expected end. There is a plan and there is a focus that all of us are gravitating towards. Everything we need in our future is gravitating towards us. For goodness and mercy shall pursue you all the days of your life. Have that confidence and know that it shall be well. God will take care of you and will take care of us all. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you very much, PK. And for all the men on the platform who are still on the platform this evening, I also want to give you a special invitation uh, to a men's only event happening at the Elevation Church, the Island Center, a Business Conference Center in Lekki on Saturday the 14th. It's, it, it's team 99 questions, uh, which is just answering questions in the heart of men. And some of our fantastic men at the Elevation Church will be answering questions. Uh, the theme is 99 questions. The events are only about questions, just questions in the heart of men. Uh, I'm sure it will be available virtually as well, but to hold in person on Saturday, uh, the 14th of May, 10 a.m., if you're in Lagos, make it to Pieces Conference Center in Lekki and be a part of that conversation. It's going to be 
no holds back discussion uh, with men. 99 questions Saturday, 14th of May, 10 a.m. Uh, and uh, I'm sure they will stream it. You can you can join live. It's just going to be about questions, like I said, questions in the art of men. And then uh, we're going to uh, keep you posted on the mentoring program. People have requested that I should take it uh, beyond, uh, or, because I said on the 40. Uh, my idea is to have 40 under 40 men that I'll mentor for six months, uh, you know. Uh, so we may consider 40 under 40 and 40 over 40. <laughs> <laughs> so we go under and over. Because yes. the issues you deal with when you are under 40 are different from the issues you are dealing with when you are over 40. That's right. why I cut it in the middle like that. Uh, over 40, you have midlife crisis issues and all those kind of things. The need for significance and, you know, reevaluating your life. But when yes. you are still under 40, uh, you know, your children are young, you may not even be married, you know, and all that. So, but we're going to sort all that out with my in-house guys and uh, I'll communicate uh, with, with, with you through uh, my Instagram platform and my other platforms. Again, uh, PK, thank you very, very much for taking our time. Uh, uh, even a short note, because we're just a few days ago, I told you, can we hang out on Monday yes. night? And you said, oh, why not? Thank you. I appreciate the fact that I can call on you at very short notice. I know you're passionate about just pouring into people, and that's why it's not difficult for you at all. And I pray that God will take the grace that he has put upon you to a new level. He will Amen. replenish you. He will fill you up. I know a lot of virtue has left you today from Amen. event to event. I pray that God will replenish you Amen. and fill you afresh Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Give you fresh energy, fresh insight, Amen and the fresh supply of his spirit upon Amen. you and your family in Jesus' amen. precious name. Amen. 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 And amen. Thank you very thank much, you so people. Much. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank I you. need to run right now. My yes. girls are waiting for me. You can ask to go and rest. It's yes. been a two events already today. Thank you, everyone. And have a fantastic day. If you are in other climbs, if you are right here in Africa with us, have a fantastic evening. And God bless you. Sleep well. Thank you, PK. Please have some rest. Uh, I hope we'll chat up before you leave. God bless you, PK. God bless you. God bless you. Cheers. Yeah. Bye bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.